They say the beauty of horror lies in its ability to externalise our deepest fears. And by they, I mean an Irishman in a Garfield costume. But it's a sentiment that I agree with. Horror allows us to explore the darkest aspects of existence. It gives us a safe space to confront the things that truly terrify us, thus allowing us to examine those parts of ourselves, to question why they scare us so much, as through our understanding of our fears, we grow one step closer to understanding the confusing world we live in, as well as our place in it. With that in mind, when I watched the film Midsommar, and it disturbed me more than any other film I've seen, what was it that terrified me so? What fears of mine did it unearth and force me to confront? I can't say I'm too excited to revisit them, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. This film was suggested to me by Dad Nuke of the Nuclear Family, or The Nukes, a fellow video essay channel that really deserves more support than they get. I've linked them in the description below. Thanks for the recommendation! Midsommar tells the story of a group of American uni students, lured by their Swedish friend to an isolated cult, in preparation for their once-in-a-lifetime Midsommar festival. The main protagonist, Dani, having just lost her family in a horrific murder-suicide, and finding her boyfriend Christian emotionally unavailable, also tags along, and while she is there, eventually comes to find a new family in Sweden even as the people she came with find themselves victims of the cult's terrifying rituals. There are a lot of angles one can approach Midsommar from. Gender, tradition, American imperialism, but today I'm looking at it as a story about grief and vulnerability. Dany loses her family in the opening minutes, and this is a tragedy that hangs over her for the rest of the film. It is also what Pele uses to draw her into the commune. He too lost his parents at a young age, but he never lost his family, and if she wants, Dany can once again be part of one. As I was watching the film, the term love bombing came to mind. Dany is welcomed wholeheartedly into the flock. She is crowned May Queen, treated with reverence. Previously, she's only had Christian, who's been searching for a way to try and dump her for months, maybe even years. But now, she has a whole family of people willing to help her, to empathise with her, to give her the emotional connection and support she needs. And I think that's what truly terrifies me about this film. If a person is grieving, if a person is depressed, if a person is lonely, that is a person who is vulnerable. A person who perhaps needs to be vulnerable, who, desperate to fill the painful void in their heart, will latch on to the first person, thing, or group they think will help them fill it. And when that vulnerability is taken advantage of, used as a vessel to worm into a person's mind, it... Well... Let's just say that, for someone like me, it is a very uncomfortable thought. Once again, shout out to the Nuclear Family for recommending this film to me. If you're still in the mood for a spine tingler, then I'd recommend you check out Lisa Lotz, another essayist who I recommended a horror classic. Give him a watch and tell him I sent you. Since this video is so short, in lieu of a director's commentary, I'll link my second channel video where I rambled about Midsommar and my initial first impressions of it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.